All right, pitch attitudes. First, we're going to go up to transition symbology, and I'm going to z-axis the flight page. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just going to talk about some of the uh, pitch attitudes that we have in the aircraft. So right now, we're sitting 5 degrees nose up on the ground. All right, you can see that on the flight page, 5 degrees nose up. 5 degrees nose up is kind of important because this is the attitude you want to be in on, say, a rolling landing. Well, I won't say always, but, you know, it's convenient. It's, it's useful. Or if you have to, like, you know, kind of slam the helicopter into the ground for whatever reason, right? Because this right here ensures that all three wheels are on the ground. This is 40 knot attitude is, uh, right here as well, right? So 5 degrees nose up is a 40 knot attitude. Uh, and uh, it just works. It, it, it is what it is, right? The next pitch attitude that we're going to talk about here, I'm going to dial this in just a little bit, right about... Uh, right about there. This is a 70 knot pitch attitude. All right. As long as I keep the horizon line going through this point of the line of sight, I should be on or around 70 knots or so. Things are still working in progress, but, you know, it, it gets there reasonably well. It, it holds that pretty good. All right. And then the next attitude that I'm going to talk about here is going to be the 90 knot attitude. So when the horizon line you know, if you say bar to bar or, you know, is in line with the uh, horizontal lines of the line of sight, that is a 90 knot pitch attitude, okay? So that's 90 knots. And then let me dial this in right here. So about a bar width above should get you somewhere around about 110 knots-ish, roughly. And then if I continue pushing a little more uh, cyclic, right about there is about 120 knot attitude, give or take, roughly. Um, so those are kind of the major pitch attitudes. And I bring all this up because, you know, early on folks were confused by the fact that the horizon line is not fixed to the true horizon. It's fixed to your line of sight. It's fixed uh, to the center of the line of sight, right? Well, it kind of makes sense when you think about the fact that I'm down low and I'm constantly going to be moving my head, scanning and stuff like that. If I'm up high in an orbit, you know, I can be looking down and to the left and still know that, oh, yep, yeah, my pitch attitude's where it needs to be, I've got that level VSI, cool, um, and I'm maintaining, you know, pitch and roll and, and all that, pitch and bank and all that kind of fun stuff, right? So having this fixed, having the horizon line fixed to the line of sight gives me way more flexibility in being able to move my head and look around, all right? So it's, it's pretty important. Uh, takes a little getting used to, you know, because think about it, if I were if I were here and I had to always go back to the center um, of the helicopter or even, you know, look up or something like that, because I got this horizon line doing all these weird things, it's not it's not really giving me a true representation of what's going on with the aircraft. Right. Um, and it would become very disorienting, and I, I think very quickly um, your inner ear and all that other kind of stuff would start just going absolutely berserk because you're constantly, you know, moving your head, trying to find that horizon line uh, this way you don't have to worry about it. It's just there. Since I'm under night system, I wanted to bring up too that notice whenever I look to the left or I look to the right, the world appears to tilt. Um, and that's because both of your TADS and PINVAS sensors are hard mounted to the aircraft. Um, so every time I look and, and the aircraft is sitting at five degrees nose up. So every time I look left and right, the world's going to appear to tilt. I bring that up because Many new pilots to the 64, especially under night system, are going to perceive that tilt, that natural tilt of the of the world, as um, a pitch change in the aircraft. And they're going to make an erroneous flight control input in the pitch, uh, which will usually send the aircraft spiraling into, you know, fun seesaws and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so just kind of be mindful of that. It didn't really change. It's just the natural, you know, pitch attitude of the helicopter uh, when it's on the ground, as well as at a hover, because... Not only is this a 40 knot attitude, this is also your hover attitude, this is also your all three wheels on the ground at the same time attitude, right? So it's it's all of those. Um, it's just it's just the way it is. So uh, be mindful of that. Don't don't make a a weird flight control input because you thought you know pitch change just happened in the aircraft when it actually didn't. Now when we're flying rotor RPM high, thank you. When we're flying under night system, we're always wanting to try and keep our head aligned with the horizon, line of sight on the horizon uh, as we're taking off here. So I'm trying to keep my head aligned with the horizon the best I can as I take off. You know, the aircraft moves, your head moves, all that kind of fun stuff. So it's not an exact science, but, you know, it just 
it helps out a lot in trying to keep yourself um, oriented to what you're doing. So that's another good thing to try and do there. Let me uh, kind of get the aircraft set up here. Uh, trim. Oh, I forgot my control indicators for y'all. There we go. All right. A little bit more right pedal for trim. Now when we're getting ready to turn the helicopter, it's the same kind of thing, right? So I'm holding this 50-knot attitude. I can see where the horizon line is is in relation to my um, line of sight. I can also see kind of where the acceleration cue and velocity vector at and all that kind of stuff as well. So when I start this turn, you know, I can look well in the direction of the turn, bank the aircraft over. As that changes, I'm just kind of rotating my head slowly, a little bit of power to help maintain my airspeed. Um, and I just kind of keep my head aligned with that horizon. I'm looking well into the direction of my turn so I can try and find, you know, say maybe my runway or whatever my other points of interest are that I'm trying to look for. And I'm just trying to keep that ex uh, flight correction, keep that horizon line at the same relative position in my line of sight while I'm doing that. So it's kind of complex. I got a little bit too much power, a little bit too much aft cyclic, and I'm out of trim. Go figure. Sitting here trying to talk through all this stuff, fly all this stuff, and uh, I'm doing a terrible job at it. These things happen. All right, trim. Now I can also trim it, and that will also help me out. I'm not a big fan of this. I'm more of a fan of never trimming in a turn, um, unless it's like a deliberate choice. You know, say maybe I'm trying to maintain that orbit, and I just, I just want to be lazy about it. You know, then I'll trim it up in the turn. Um, and stuff like that. A little bit more power reduction there. Uh, yeah, so there we go. And keep coming on around. Trying to hold that airspeed altitude and trim. All that kind of stuff. Now with that too, you know, I'm a, I'm a big attitude flyer. So I will establish, so let's scroll out, trim, recenter. There we go. I will establish my desired pitch attitude first. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look over at my VSI, and I'm going to ask myself, well, is my, and I'm going to ask myself, am I climbing or am I descending? Like right now, I'm, I'm climbing. Well, then I'm going to look at my airspeed. Am I at the airspeed I want to be? No? Okay, well, then I need to apply a little bit more forward cyclic because I've got, you know, I need to accelerate the helicopter. So we'll, a little bit more forward cyclic, trim. There we go. We're accelerating. I need a little bit more power, a little bit more forward cyclic, trim. All right, so we're accelerating the aircraft. So this becomes my primary kind of like power indication. So wherever I'm, I'm flying under night system, you know, my, my cross check, my scan is literally my center symbology, which includes the velocity vector acceleration cue. And then I go over to my VSI, center symbology, VSI, center symbology, VSI, center symbology, trim. Okay, so center symbology, uh, VSI, center symbology, VSI, center symbology, trim, and this will change periodically. Center symbology over to airspeed, center symbology, uh, heading. You know, and I'm just kind of center symbology, do, 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 going around the, the display there, you know, singing my happy little song, just trying to get the, uh, get everything where I want it, right? Because here's, here's the reality. If my pitch attitude is set and my VSI is level, um, then all I got to do is confirm that my airspeed is is where it should be. As long as my airspeed's where it should be, then I know that my power, my torque, is correct. Um, and also, you know, trim gets a vote too, so trim needs to be there as well. So center symbology, VSI, center symbology, trim, center symbology, VSI, center symbology, airspeed, you know, center symbology, heading, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm just kind of scanning around, uh, doing all those kind of things there. You know, and I can mean, I can, I can be looking over here, and I can still know that my pitch attitude and VSI are where they need to be, all that kind of stuff, right? So it become, I... The goal is you can't multitask. It's it's impossible, but you can timeshare that one second that you have to dedicate to trying to process this information and make a flight control input. So you try and break it down. If I only have to worry about three things, you know, then I can kind of this becomes irrelevant, this becomes irrelevant, etc. Other than as this is a supporting, um, this is a supporting instrument, I guess you could say, uh, to verify that I have the the correct power and pitch and all that kind of stuff, right? So uh, that's kind of the way the way I do this here. Again, doing that turn, keeping the uh, notice that I did not interrupt the force trim here. As I initiate the turn, I need a little bit of collective, and I need a little bit of aft cyclic just to kind of help maintain my airspeed. Trying to keep that head aligned with the, the horizon, looking well into the turn, 
Yeah, a little bit out of trim. Need a little bit of left pedal. And we're just trying to hold that there, looking where we're going. All right, that's where I want to go. I found the direction that I want to go, so now I'm just going to kind of lock my head in on it. I'm going to fly the head tracker to it. Well, really, the velocity vector, or uh, the velocity vector, the flight path vector. I'm going to fly the head flight path vector to it, place it over. Oh, I need to take out that power that I added uh, when I initiated the turn. Trim. And now I am ground tracking to my desired point. You know, same thing. So let's see. Uh, yeah, that dark spot right there. All right, we're going to bank the aircraft over. Get a little bit, oop, pulled too much aft cyclic. That's why I'm climbing. Keeping the head aligned with the horizon the best I can. Trying to keep my head aligned with my antenna point that I want to go to. All right, there we go. Right there, we'll roll out. Flight path vectors over the top of it. I'm ground tracking right towards it. Just working on getting my 90 knot pitch at it, or my 90 knots. And a little bit of pedal, trim, center. There we go. Cool. All right. So hopefully uh, that's kind of helpful and uh, explains some of the pitch attitudes for the aircraft and how to, you know, effectively look around and kind of use that horizon line and, and everything else when you're flying at night.